Let's turn back now to the continued efforts by Donald Trump and his allies to undermine the results of the 2020 presidential election, even as he has his eyes on 2024. Our next guests are taking a look at why big lie fraud allegations evaporate under scrutiny. Their latest book is titled The Big Truth, Upholding Democracy in the Age of the Big Lie. The authors, Chief Washington Correspondent for CBS News, Major Garrett, and the Executive Director of the Nonpartisan Center for Election Innovation and Research, David Becker, both join us now. Congrats, gentlemen, uh, on the book. Major, it is now almost two years yes. since that election. But we know the power of the big lie. Republicans who want Donald Trump's blessing have to swear their fealty to it. We know there are some who are still trying to undo the 2020 presidential election in certain battleground states like Arizona. We also know that more than half of Republicans still don't believe Joe Biden was elected legitimately. Your book takes on these conspiracy theories. Yes, it does. And one thing I'm really, really tired of, Jonathan and Mr. Barnacle, it's great to see you, is the running down of the 2020 election by people who say they love America. If you love America, then you need to embrace things that America does on a bipartisan basis that are important and heroic. And the 2020 election, I'm not talking about the result, I'm talking about the process, mm -hmm. was a result in which lots of Americans did things in an adaptive way, in an ingenious way, and in a hard way without a roadmap. We had the highest turnout in any presidential election in our history, the most diverse turnout in our country's history, and we did it in the face of a pandemic with only social distancing and no vaccines as a protective device. We did this thing on behalf of our country and our democratic future, and it should be celebrated for the thing that it was, an achievement in behalf of democracy not something to be vilified and slandered by people who seek political power or fundraising. And that's what's going on. And it is demonstrably true because every single time you engage someone who wants to deny the election, they either don't have the facts or they keep changing the explanation for how it happened. When I started my career, I was a, pol I was a crime reporter, cops, not politics. There's one crime and there's one way of doing a crime. There are not 17 crimes. And that's what continues to happen with the big lie. It always changes, it always moves, always dodging. No, the election was valid, verifiable, over and over and over, more so than any previous election in our history. And that's a fact. So David, obviously election uh, you know, integrity is so important to our current politics now too. And as we look back on 2020, though, it's remarkable how close Trump came to pulling this off. We know about the events of January 6th, but it's not just Mike Pence who doesn't go along with it. It's also state and local officials who rose to the task and defied a president of their own party at times. That's exactly right. I've been working in elections for about a quarter of a century. I used to be a lawyer at the Justice Department and the Civil Rights Division doing voting rights. Um, it's remarkable. We rely so much, we put so much faith in the Constitution and its principles, but ultimately it's a piece of parchment. It relies upon the goodwill and good faith of men and women all across the country to put its principles into action, to manifest them. And that happened in 2020. I mean, you think about what a triumph of democracy 2020 actually was, factually speaking. We had more paper ballots that were verifiable that we could go back to and audit and recount than ever before. All the ballots in all the battleground states. That's the first time that's happened. We had recounts and audits in many states. Georgia famously recounted its ballots three times. We had more judicial scrutiny of this election than any election in American history by far. More pre-election scrutiny that clarified the rules ever Everyone knew the rules on election day. They could whine about them later, but they knew the rules. And we had more post-election uh, judicial scrutiny that clarified and confirmed the results. The losing presidential candidate didn't ask for statewide recounts in Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, even though it was his right. And Republicans actually did very well down ballot on every single race. They won every single swing house race. And yet the lies persist and it is tearing at the fabric of American democracy and also threatening the election workers, the professional election officials that pulled off this great triumph, they are seeing tremendous stress all over the nation, even though we're almost 700 days, as you mentioned, past the 2020 election. And 90 percent of Republicans and almost all the ones in public office know this. They know this is true, okay. but they have to bend their knee to Trump. Yeah. And they do it over and over and over, as, and I would argue, knowing this and doing that 
is one of the most astonishing things I've ever seen in American politics. Yeah, so that's what I want to ask you about. I'm going to take you back to your print days. You're mm -hmm. covering cops, okay? Yeah. There's a murder. Right. They report to the scene of the murder, and they assemble, try to assemble witnesses to the murder. They might come up with a couple, but there might be 10 others on the scene who won't tell the cops what they saw because they were afraid. So my question to you is, the murder of democracy that's taking place, so far it's, it's an assault on democracy, mm -hmm. but it could well be a murder. We have multiple witnesses to what's going on. They're called members of the United States Senate, mm -hmm. members of the United States House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. Why do they remain so silent? It's an interesting feedback loop in the Trump world, and I've covered the Trump world since 2015. I've never seen a more direct connection between a political leader and what he says and those who follow him saying it right back to him almost instantaneously. And Republicans, and this is their explanation, I would describe it as an excuse, well, my people believe this, therefore I must believe it with them. I can't argue with them about this, they believe it too strongly, that is to say the big lie. I'm not in a position to talk them out of it, therefore I have to echo what they believe because it came to them from former President Trump. My only observation about that is sometimes politics is a difficult business. It calls upon you to do something that sometimes is uncomfortable, which means standing with your principles, understanding what the Constitution is, and defending it, because that's more important than your particular political position for that particular moment. We've seen it before in American history. I understand it's a rarity, but it's really important now. And very few Republicans are willing to do that. Mitt Romney, Adam Kinzinger, Liz Cheney among them. The vitally important new book out today is titled The Big Truth, Upholding Democracy in the Age of the Big Lie. Major Garrett and David Becker, thank you both for being here. Congrats again on the book. Uh